Welcome to another episode of the La Rapo. This is episode 25. And today I am going to discuss divorce. And I pose the question Should no fault divorce be introduced in the Tox and Caicos Islands? And in no fault divorce is a divorce where the party filing or the petitioner filing to be divorced from their spouse does not have to prove fault no fault divorce has been recently introduced in england and wales and so i would like to discuss it in details but before i do my usual disclaimer this is not legal advice should not be construed as legal advice for legal advice please contact a lawyer of your choice i'll be back to discuss the matter in details Welcome back. The Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Act of 2020 reforms the divorce process in England and Wales to remove the concept of fault. Many legal professionals have long argued that the divorce law was out of date, particularly falling the landmark case of Owens and Owens in 2018. Therefore, on the 6th of April 2022, the new legislation came into effect. It replaces the five grounds that were previously required and which to base an application for a divorce and it allows couples to divorce without assigning fault it removes the possibility of contested divorce hearings it introduces an option for a joint application and it makes sure the language is in plain English. For example, changing the phrase or the, the words decree nice to conditional order and decree absolute to final order. These changes will also apply to civil partnerships. So, what does the new law entails? Well, previously, divorce was governed by the Matrimonial Causes Act of 1973. The new act states subject to section 3 either both parties to a marriage may apply to the court for an order a divorce order which dissolves the marriage and the ground that the marriage has broken down irretrievably an application under subsection 1 must be accompanied by a statement by the applicant or applicants that the marriage has broken down irretrievably. The court at um, subsection 3 states that the court dealing 
with the application under subsection 1 must take the statement to be conclusive evidence that the marriage has broken down irretrievably and b make a divorce order and at 4 it sets out a divorce order is in the first instance a conditional order and b may not be made final before the end of the six week period from the making of the conditional order so once one party or both parties make an application for a divorce there is no need for them to support that application with any evidence of wrongdoing on behalf of the other party all the application must state is that the marriage has broken down irretrievably and it will be more um, potent if both parties make a joint application the judge hearing the matter as he was previous he or she was previously required to do does not have to make any inquiries into the reasons for the breakdown of the marriage and so that's a, a major departure from the old law the changes in england and wales divorce law significantly alter and simplify the process of getting divorced in england and wales and as i previously mentioned it also relates to civil partnership divorce reform in the united kingdom is not a new subject many key individuals and practitioners within the family law sphere has advocated for changes for over 20 years in 1996 the government introduced the family law act which included the concept of no fault divorce however the provision was later repealed historically divorce law reform has not been considered a priority and the matrimonial causes act of 1973 remained the governing legislation well that has now changed so what was the previous position before the introduction of this new law before the introduction of the no fault divorce the law sets out that in order to apply for a divorce a spouse needs to demonstrate that their marriage has broken down irretrievably by relying on one of the five facts these facts are as follows one adultery two unreasonable behavior three desertion four two years separation with consent and five years separation with the exception of a desertion the remaining criteria are either based on fault or a period of separation where an individual wishes to commence divorce proceedings but they have not been separated from their spouse for at least two years they were therefore left with the fault based facts of adultery or unreasonable behavior to demonstrate that their marriage has broken down beyond repair adultery can be a very tricky and difficult ground to argue the offending spouse has to admit adultery within the divorce proceedings or the applicant 
would have to provide evidence of the adultery being committed. Many individuals therefore found themselves with little or no choice but to proceed with the fact of unreasonable behavior. The test for this criterion is has the respondent behaved in such a way that the petitioner cannot reasonably be expected to live with them. The petitioner being the person filing for the divorce, the respondent being the person who respond to the, the petitioner's request for a divorce. An individual proceeding on this fact, the fact of unreasonable behavior, is required to set out examples of their spouse's unreasonable behavior within the divorce application, such as domestic or emotional abuse, family disputes, or inappropriate behavior, etc. As previously mentioned, the case of Owens and Owens, which made its way through the court system and ultimately to the Supreme Court in 2018 highlights many of these issues. In this case, Mrs. Owens petitioned for divorce from her husband in 2015, seeking to demonstrate that their marriage had broken down irretrievably and the basis of Mr. Owens' unreasonable behavior. She described her marriage as unhappy and wretched amongst other things. Mr. Owens chose to defend the petition stating that his behavior could not be deemed to be unreasonable within the context of their marriage and the examples that Mrs. Owens gave of his behavior were not sufficient to satisfy the test referred to above, which is that it would be unreasonable to expect her to continue to live with Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens was ultimately successful and the Supreme Court ruled that the behavior Mrs. Owens sought to rely on was not sufficient. Whilst the Supreme Court justices agreed that the outcome was not at all satisfactory for Mrs. Owens as her marriage had clearly broken down they were bound by the law Mrs. Owens therefore had to remain married to Mr. Owens until 2020 by which time she was aged 70 when she could rely on the fact of a five-year separation which did not require his consent now the change in the law in england and wales will help to ensure in my view that lawyers can move the attention away from proving fault removing some of the acrimony in the divorce proceedings and therefore able to focus the expertise in assisting individuals to deal with other arrangements that needs to be made following the separation, such as financial matters, arrangement for the children, property separation, etc. These aspects can be complex and require considerable
thought and advice by using a non-confrontational and positive approach lasting agreements can be reached looking to the future rather than attributing blame to one partner or another the law and divorce in the Turks and Caicos Islands could be found in the matrimonial causes ordinance section 5 of the said ordinance sets out the grounds for divorce section 5 subsection 1 states that subject to subsection 7 a petition for divorce may be presented to the court by either party to a marriage and the ground that the marriage has broken down irretrievably subsection 2 states that the court shall not hold the marriage to be broken down irretrievably unless the petitioner satisfies the court of one or more of the following facts one that the respondent has committed adultery and in consequence of that adultery the petitioner finds it intolerable to live with the respondent two that the respondent has behaved in such a way that the petitioner cannot reasonably be expected to live with the respondent three that the respondent has deserted the petitioner for a continuous period of at least two years immediately preceding the presentation of the petition four that the parties to the marriage have lived apart for a continuous period of at least two years immediately preceding the presentation of the petition hereafter in this audience ordinance referred to as two years separation and the respondent consents to the decree being granted and five that the parties to the marriage has lived apart for a continuous period of at least five years immediately preceding the presentation of the petitioner hearing in this ordinance referred to as five years of separation and subsection three states that an a petition for divorce it shall be the duty of the court to inquire so far as it reasonably can into the facts alleged by the petitioner and into any facts alleged by the respondent so clearly there is a fault base premise to divorce in the Turks and Caicos Islands and the court has to be satisfied that the party relying on any fact to ground the application that the marriage has broken down irretrievably that the court must be satisfied that the ground does exist and if the court is not so satisfied then the court is at liberty to refuse the petition or to dismiss the petition so clearly the talks and Caicos islands matrimonial clauses ordinance like the matrimonial clauses act of 1973 which has been amended in england and wales required that fault not only be shown but be proved by the person filing for a divorce 
with the exception of a five-year separation or desertion and even in those circumstances the parties would still have to show the dates when the desertion occurred or when the separation began in order that the court could determine that it falls within either the two-year or the five-year period so the question that i now pose to viewers is this is it time for us in the Turks and Caicos Islands to change the divorce law to eliminate the fault requirement and make the process more straightforward and simple? In my respectful view, I believe that the law should be changed. Please let me know how you feel in the comments below. Here is where I will leave it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in another episode.